Carol and Cheryl. Cheryl and Carol. Carol and Cheryl. Hi, welcome back to Conversations with Carol and Cheryl. Carol, it's been a minute. Hey, Cheryl. <laughs> How are oh, you? <laughs> you first. A <laughs> jinx. You owe me a beer. <laughs> right. <laughs> you go first. How are you? Oh, I'm doing well. I'm Good. doing well. So what's yeah. up with you? Uh, I'm doing well, too. I am very excited to see that the light is shining in my eyes at the end of the tunnel with this pandemic. Yes. But I guess we'll be getting booster shots. I don't know. I'm a little leery. I don't want to think about it. I'm just happy that we can go out and things are going to start opening soon. Um, My daughter came in from California last week and we went out to some restaurant and bars that we like to go to. And now that my son's 21, we took him and that was fun. We went to the top of the W Hotel that overlooks Washington, D.C., and it was so beautiful. So it was nice to go out and do that stuff. But it's yeah. funny. It's like now I'm recuperating. Now I'm just laying around the house. <laughs> and that was a week ago. So are you fully vaccinated? Yes. So, yeah. And are you? Oh, yes. Yeah. But I only got the second shot a week ago. So I'm still in that, you know, I'm vaccinated, but not fully immune. Right. I think you got another week, right? Yeah, I'm still wearing the mask. Which vaccine did you get? I had gotten the Pfizer. Yeah, me too. Did you get sick on the second one? Um, Not at all. Same not, here. Just maybe my arm hurt and I was tired. That was it. Uh, my shingle shot was way worse mm. than the second uh, COVID shot. So I thought it would be fun to, you know, just kind of chit chat and catch up and see, you know, what we've been up to and maybe follow up on some stories. And what came to my mind immediately was Harry and Megan. Oh, boy. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. And I guess you saw the Oprah interview. No, I did not. You didn't? No. Oh, okay. Should I? Uh, Yeah, it was good. It was good, I think. She started getting mental health issues the way the press was treating her and And I guess one of the big revelations was that she had considered suicide. Wow. Yeah. It was interesting to see how different their life is. They're living, you know, in California and they've got chickens, a chicken coop, and they're heading all kinds of companies now. And I don't know in what form. Obviously, I don't think they're going to work, you know, at the briefcase every day. And (laughs) so that was interesting. And they seem very cute together. You know, who is it? Uh, Piers Morgan got all upset over it and lost his job, his morning show, over it. Because the other guy on the morning show was like, get over it, basically. And he was just upset and walked off. So he lost his job. And then Sharon Osbourne lost her job because she was arguing about it on The View with the other woman. Anyway, it was really kind of funny to have such a chain event. But they never quit. Their intention was to step back, not walk away. But they had no choice. I guess the royal family told them basically to walk away, you know, but that wasn't their intention. They were always going to serve, but Mm -hmm. at a limited capacity. Mm -hmm. So it was interesting. She mentioned that her dad actually lied to her about talking to the press, and that was very um, upsetting to her. Just kind of sad that what comes along with fame and your own family, your own father would lie about going to the press to get money. Right. Anyway. But they seem happy when uh, Queen Elizabeth's husband died and he had to go back. It was like, awkward. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. That's right. I just talked shit about everybody and spilled the beans. Now (laughs) now you got to kick the can and I got to come back and face everybody. (laughs) You know how it is. Weddings and funerals. You got to see everybody. And very American, she stayed back. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm sure she had a good excuse. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, like, today I got to wash my hair. Tomorrow I will be drying it. <laughs> right. <laughs> it was funny. I found this out by accident. But, you know, the couple on um, Love is Blind, the interracial couple, he is white. I loved him. I can't yes. think of his name and her yes. and the girl. They're still together. Okay. Yeah, and they just wrote a book. I was following them on Instagram now. Oh. 
And uh, yeah, they seem real happy. And I think it's kind of neat. That is neat. Yeah. I don't know who else is together, but um, when you think about it, the way people meet these days and everything, chances are, you know, pretty reasonable that they'd stay together by discussing what they want, you know, in a mate for hours Mm -hmm. without seeing each other. It doesn't seem so surprising actually now that they're still together. Yeah. So you're talking about Lauren and Cameron? Yes. Yeah. I really like them too. They just seem like happy people. Seem attracted to each other. I'm not surprised they're still together. Right. Me too. It seems like the families get along from what I could tell on the Instagram. You know, they're pictured with them. So, yeah, that's nice. I was going to say, it's kind of funny with all this stuff during the pandemic. I don't know about you, but during the pandemic, I felt like I was so lazy. And then when I started thinking back about it, I was like, actually, I did a lot of stuff around the house, you know, and. And I thought you were going to say when you started thinking about it, you've always been lazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know me too well, Carol. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> oh, God. I'm a lazy person with bursts of energy. You know? I don't think you're lazy. You do so much. You just that's don't funny. realize how much you do. You've done a lot of stuff and you picked up a new sport, kayaking. Yes, yes. How do you like that? I love it. I'm addicted. Yeah, I try to go out and play every day now that I'm retired. And I get really upset when I have to actually adult and like pay bills or clean out email or whatever, file papers. You know, I just want to be out playing. I'm getting very spoiled. That's funny. Well, you have a great life. You have the best of both worlds as far as I'm concerned. Yes. Living in where you're living now. And then when you go down to Florida during the cold months, I mean, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know how to live it. It's crazy here right now. This weekend was insane. There had to be, I'm not exaggerating. I took Zuko down to the dog beach and it's right next to the gay beach. There were probably a thousand gay guys on the gay beach on Friday and it was freezing down there and they're all prancing around in their Speedos. And I'm walking by with Zuko trying to get, you know, I have to walk through the gay beach to get to my car. And they're like, your dog is stunning. (laughs) I'm like, well, he's friendly. You can pet him. Oh, and I'm like, aren't you guys cold? And they're like, well, it's not bad if you stay close to the ground. Like, okay, so you're just going to lay on a towel all day, you know. (laughs) (laughs) But it's just insane how many people are here. And it's raining. I mean, it's raining sideways. You probably hear it in this recording, the rain hitting my window. Mm, Wow. Um, So I'm just shocked at how many people are out. And I think it's because of the COVID lift, you know. Yeah, yeah. Flexibility. It's really good to see. People are just going crazy to get out. Well, you know what I think is neat is that you sent me that thing about cicadas being a totem. Yeah. And I didn't know what a totem was till Carol just explained it to me recently. But how cool that that um, article would say the the cicadas represent coming out of hiding, coming out and, you know, renewal, which is exactly that it would fall the summer the pandemic was lifted. That's true. I never thought of that. Yeah. Everyone's coming out. Everybody's, you know, shedding their old skin. (laughs) It's true. It's true. It's a renewal, a a transition from pandemic back to normal. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, I thought that was pretty neat. But so Zuko is Mary's dog and Mary's got big uh, news, right? Right. So she graduated in June. Woohoo! And we went to the ceremony. It was the first ceremony after covid So it was an outdoor ceremony in the bleachers, social distance with masks, and it started raining, and she hadn't gone up yet. Her name hadn't been called, and they did like a lightning delay because there was lightning. So they're like, everybody go to your car. It was just like a Northern Virginia swim meet, 
that's exactly what it reminded me of. And we're all sitting in the car waiting to be called back. And she just goes, I'm not going back. She's like, my friends left. It's pouring rain. I'm soaking wet. I have these, you know, four inch heels on. I can't walk in them. And I'm like, oh, hell to the yes. Let's go back and start cooking food and ordering food. And Butch is like, you have to walk. Now it's up to you. <laughs> All right. Are you sure? And she's like, dad, I'm sure. Let's go. Well, why don't we just wait 15 minutes? And yeah. I'm just sitting there going, let's let's get out of this nightclub. And she's like, let's get out of here. Like. We had no interest in it, but that's just how I am. I'm a big party pooper when it comes to that stuff. But she looked beautiful in her gown. We got the family picture for Facebook. You know, we did go to the stadium, so we did show up. Anyway, we went back to her house, ordered food, made food. I can't remember. But it was just so beautiful. I mean, didn't that go fast, that four years? It seemed like you had just sent me a picture of her decorating her dorm. Yes. And then she was graduating. Maybe working one summer and then graduating. Right. <laughs> it was very fast. So she got a degree in small business and innovation and accepted a job in California. So she's going to be with your daughter uh, completely on the other side of the earth. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. living out her dream. Congratulations to you. Mom and dad do a lot of it and, yeah. you know, supporting them. And congratulations to Mary. That's awesome. Well, I'm doing more now than I have in the last four years, except writing checks, of course. So she's here with Zuko for six weeks and I'm on puppy duty. He's very good. He's getting me up and out. We go to the beach every morning and run with the other dogs and play in the water and throw the ball. But he's so much work. It's like an infant. Mm. He's beautiful. He's the best, sweetest creature on the planet. I don't have the energy. There's a reason 21-year-olds get puppies and not, right. you know, 58-year-old people. I'm just not that much of a dog person. But he is very attached to me. I'm his, like, second mommy now. And I am enjoying him. I don't want to be a Debbie Downer like an Eeyore about it, but they're a lot of work. <laughs> well, that's funny because I just, I'm dogless right now. So I had a little chihuahua. Actually, it's my daughter. She has two. When she went to California, both of them were with me. And then she took the one and he's been with her for a year. And then when she came back this last time, we talked about her taking the second one. I feel kind of weird because I remember being a kid and, you know, asking my mom, would you give up our dog for a million dollars? And of course, no, no. And like, I feel like I gave up my dog. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Even though it's really not mine. Like, I'm yeah. like, God, am I getting to be cold? You know? Right. <laughs> but I'm working from home and the dog is laying on the bed next to me, to my desk for eight hours a day. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like this is so sad. And I'm watching the other dog pictures at, you know, the dog park. Pictures on the Malibu beach, pictures at this park. You know what I mean? And I'm like, this dog needs to live. This dog needs to see California. Yeah. So, yeah. So I'm dogless. It's got its perks. I am washed my sheets and dove in them, you know, and didn't have to worry about any dog hair or mm -hmm. anything like that. You got to sleep in the middle of the bed? Yes. I do miss her. I'm kind of over it, though, too. <laughs> yeah, I know. You get over it fast, don't you? Well, I have one of those things you plug in and you put the essential oil in with water. A mister, I mm -hmm. guess, you know, electric mister. That's not the name. I can't think of it. I don't know why. And those aren't good for dogs because I think they can, it can go into their lungs and stuff. So anyway, I plugged it in. I'm like, yes, yes. I thought you were going to say that you plugged in this oil infused mister and it smells like dog. No. <laughs> Just so you <laughs> right feel now. like you have the dog around. Right. No. <laughs> it's actually an orange citrus. I love the smell of oranges. So anyway, it's just nice. It's just a little things, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about her, like, taking a little tinkle on the on the rug, you know. 
it's a nice break. We'd like to go out and see um, my daughter, and then maybe if it's not working out, we'll bring her back, and I'll be ready for her by that time. Of course, I love her, but if not, I'm good with it, too. But yeah, so like I said, I was thinking, God, I've been so lazy and stuff, but I did some home improvements, and you did home improvements, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What'd you do? Yeah, so we got rid of our popcorn ceiling, which was an absolute mess. (laughs) The contractor did a really good job. There wasn't any popcorn anywhere, but they must have done a lot of sanding and a lot of like putting putty and sanding because there was like sand dust everywhere. Oh, God. An inch thick. And I had put everything away, anything on surfaces. So it wasn't a huge cleanup, but I had to wipe down the walls and any surfaces that were exposed. It was a mess. The floors, it took... I mean, my house is so tiny. It took like one full day Mm -hmm. with two people. But it looks so beautiful. I can't wait for you to see it. So we have the regular ceiling. I put in some ceiling lights. The recessed ones? Yeah, the recessed. And the new ones, they have a setting that you can pick the type of light you want. So if you want like the really bright fluorescent light, you can set it on that. Or you can do like a... I call it a warm light, Mm -hmm. like the warmer orange type of light. So I have the fluorescence in the kitchen and then the warmer lights in the dining room and living room. Upstairs, we put in ceiling fans, which are absolutely fabulous when it's hot here because the on the second floor, it just never seems to cool down. Even if you have all the windows closed and the dehumidifier going, the air conditioner going, it's just nice having the fan to like move the air around, especially at night. I just love it. And it's on the remote. It's so nice. And then it has a light that dims. Nice. So it's super, super bright. Or you can like dim it down and get your mood lighting. There's no sense in having anything that you don't have a remote to because there's nothing worse than falling asleep and being freezing or hitting you in the head, just spend that extra money and always get a remote. I highly recommend that. And then we had a fireplace. We took the fireplace out and I had a Murphy bed in my big house. And we brought that here to my forever house and installed it again, a full day's project installing this thing. It's a beast. But, oh, my God, it looks so good. And I just love it. I just love it. That's so cool that you have a Murphy bed. It was custom built in Virginia in the 1980s. And I went into the store to see about maybe getting a new one that would match my kitchen cabinets. And I walk in and the guy goes, yep, what's your last name? I'm like, well, my parents bought it. Yep. What's their last name? He pulls out the pink piece of paper from 1980 something when they bought it. Oh my God. And he goes, I designed this bed. And I'm like, yeah, well, I'm taking it to my beach house. He goes, just bring it down to our factory and we'll refurbish it for you. So they sanded it down. It was oak. They painted it white, just like my cabinets. Uh, They put a little subfloor in it. Unbelievable. So we had to take it all apart to get it down there. But we took pictures and put the nuts and screws and baggies with stickies. You know, we're not really that handy. So we had to kind of document everything, but took us a full day, got it back together. I bought an eight inch foam mattress for it. It's a full bed and it's so comfortable. Wow. Really nice. It looks really nice in this space, too. So anyway, we took the fireplace out and put the Murphy bed where the fireplace is. So you'll see it when you come. Yeah, I can't wait. That sounds really cool. The last thing I have to do is mount the TV. But I'm not going to do that probably till 2022. Because I think it's going to cost about $2,000 to buy the TV. I'm going to have it mounted, have somebody come in and do it. And then I'm not really sure where the cable box is going to go. I think you're supposed to have some kind of a cabinet or shelf or something for those extra plug-in things. I'm going to have a sound bar 
and maybe the Apple TV. So I don't know where those things sit, if everything's well, mounted. I had my TV mounted, and the guy put a hole in the wall and brought the cables through, but it turned out to be a mess because now I can't hide the cables because some are coming straight down from the TV, some are coming out of the wall. If I had to do my mounting of my TV all over again, I would just have the wires come down from the TV because I did some wires in the wall and brought them out. But then if your table is not the right height and you add anything to the TV, like Apple TV, I did Apple TV after the fact, there's not enough room to fish it through, at least on mine. So I have cables coming out of the hole that they made. I have cables coming down from the TV, and it just looks like a mess. You know, I mean, I tried to put bind them together, but like I said, then I got one coming out of the wall. So I would just have them all come out and just put a cover over them or something and paint them cover the same color as your wall or something. But yeah. you're good at that. You've hid your wires on your, you're very neat that way and, and handy. So, well, what I did was I had the electrician come and move the outlets up. Ah, so everything will be behind the TV. Oh, maybe that's what I should do. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to have the these guys come. But I have outlets on top, behind the TV, outlets down by the floor, so they can use whatever they want. The problem is going to be the wall I'm mounting it on is cement. And there's not a whole lot of room to run wires and such. That's a problem where my TV is. Yeah. There's cinder block behind there. Right. So anyway, that's going to be pushed off till 2022. Right now, I'm working on the artwork. I follow this photographer down in Florida, and she posted a picture of a dolphin jumping out of the water in Sarasota Bay. I think it was playing in the waves of her boat. She posted on Facebook, and I'm like, oh, my God, how can I buy that picture? That would look perfect over my couch. And she goes, no, no, we don't sell the pictures. So I thought about it for about two days, and I'm like, I really want that. So I sent her a message, and I said, um, will you give me the photo? Since you're not selling it, can I just have it? And I'll make a donation to a charity. So she's like, oh, my God, you're so sweet. Yes. So she sent me the picture, and I'm having it printed on Canvas. It'll be here on Thursday. And then I wrote back to her, and I said, what? charity do you want me to donate to and she goes you pick did you say oh okay i did a dollar for saint jude at cvs yeah (laughs) (laughs) no i really wanted it to be legit of course i didn't know what was appropriate to donate to buy that in a gallery would probably be five hundred dollars or a couple hundred dollars minimum so anyway, one of my ex-co-workers was doing a fundraiser for Crohn's disease. So I just donated to her thinking this is a win-win. Like she's going to get money, research for Crohn's for her family. I'm going to get this photo. So I sent the receipt. I sent $200 to this Crohn's research. And I sent her the receipt and said, you know, I paid 200 She goes, oh, my God, my sister struggles with Crohn's. I'm so glad you donated to that charity. Nice. Isn't that so crazy? Yeah, it is. Just the synchronicity of it. So anyway, I have my dolphin photo for over my couch. I'm having it printed on canvas. Oh, you are doing the canvas? You were going to do metal when we talked. Yeah, I wanted to do metal, but it wasn't going to be, the resolution wasn't big enough Mm -hmm. for the size I need. And I didn't want to go back to her and ask for a bigger print. But the one I'm doing is like 36 by 40. I mean, it's huge. Yeah. Uh, We went shopping today to all these galleries, local artists looking for artwork near the Murphy bed. And we couldn't find anything. So now I'm looking through my collection because I want to do like a square with four prints. But we'll see. I There is one local artist I love. There are some free sites that you can download photos from. Um, I saw from that designer that I follow. So you mm-hmm. might want to check out artwork on the free sites for downloading. 
See? Okay. Yeah. I mean, I want local art from here where I live. Okay. I'm kind of picky about what I want. And I think when we sell the house, we're going to sell it furnished. So I want it all to flow and work. I see. Yeah. But I would like to have some prints of my kids. I don't think we like them enough. (laughs) I don't know. We're not doing it right at the moment. (laughs) But I want to. But what have you been doing? Because you did a lot. You painted your room. Yeah, I painted my room a dark blue. It's called Navel. And I'm not a blue person. But something in me, I don't know. I decided to paint it dark blue. And um, then I put, it's going to sound, probably sound tacky, but I think it's pretty. And it's my room, and I'm not married, so I can have it as childish as I want it. <laughs> Thinking, gosh, what can I do that's different, that's not so, you know, everyone's going to expect, you know, blue and white, gold and white or something. So anyway, I was looking at it, and I bought these, like, little um, rhinestones. To make it look like little stars in the top. And I only did it on a couple walls. And so it's real pretty at night. It's a very soothing room. I have two canister-like lamps. It looks like somebody took broken glass, you know, and and rolled the canister in it. And then the lights come up. And so it's just really soothing. And I love the way it turned out. I thought I'm going to challenge myself and make this blue work, even though I'm not a blue person. And I love it. I love it. So I did that, and I had got a new light, came with a remote control, and I can make it white light. I thought the white light, the LED light, would make the little diamond sparkle. Um, but what's really hilarious is that they sparkle when I don't have my glasses on. Then when I put my glasses on, I see that they're little perfectly shaped <laughs> rhinestones. <laughs> <laughs> but every once in a while, the light will catch it, and it will sparkle. It's cute. And it's not a whole lot. It's just enough. And so I got the light on the ceiling. And I can also make it a warm light and I can dim it and it comes with the timer. So that's really nice. Mm -hmm. When I go to bed at night, I have my remote bed, remote control. I have my light dimmer, remote control. I have my fan, remote control. (laughs) And I have my twinkle light, remote control. (laughs) (laughs) The only thing you need is a Lilo and you're good to go. (laughs) A remote control. (laughs) Something that would make me kind of give me energy was buying things off of let go offer up is what it was called is what it is now called mm-hmm. and I bought some things from there that were you know obviously secondhand and I bought some mirrors and I bought a nightstand and I bought a chandelier and I changed out my chandelier and put this one in I loved the other one it bothered me though from the day it went in because it wasn't bright enough and I lived with it for what four or four and a half years finally I was like I need light so I got that and then I ended up getting a new sofa which made me change my whole living room around I have a little bathroom downstairs as you know and I did peel and stick wallpaper and it's awesome I mean what a quick fix for 20 bucks I bought two rolls and I did the back wall, and then I bought my mirror off of um, Offer Up. I bought my little shelf off of Amazon. I mean, so inexpensive for everything. And it completely transformed the bathroom. Now I'm doing black walls on mm-hmm. the rest. Mm-hmm. And um, But anyone that wants to just do a quick change or, you know, cover up a tabletop, the peel and stick wallpaper is fantastic. Does it come off easy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really? Wow. Cool. Yeah, it's really nice. It's a quick fix. Now, I remember years ago, I had an office mate, and she had a roach problem at her home. And it was kind of new. And she was, like, really freaked out because she's like, I'm clean. I don't know where these things are coming from, you know? So she called an exterminator. He's like, take your contact paper out. They love the glue Mm. of contact paper. So... When I was looking at the peel and stick, some of them specifically said contact paper. So I don't know if the glue on the peel and stick is the same as contact paper, but some said contact paper and then some said peel and stick. So I went ahead with the peel and stick. Mm -hmm. But And I did Google to see if contact paper, the glue still, is that causes that problem. 
or could, I guess, maybe if you get one. I don't know. I don't know if it brings them in, whatever. But contact paper, they said yes. It's like a smortgage board for them. Oh, my God. So I didn't know that. She was the only one that ever told me that. And so my motto, a little information goes a long way. Thank God you had that office mate. Yeah, yeah. Explain that. I mean, how would you know that? It's crazy. So anyway, so I don't know if the peel stick is has that problem. I'm keeping an eye out. I have an exterminator anyway for ants. I get ants every summer. And I had the dogs in the backyard, and it's a townhouse community, and you got the trash. So I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to have a exterminator come every quarter and just do preventative stuff. So peel and stick is a great way to refresh a room real quick. Or furniture. You could do the drawers, you know. Oh, yeah. That's a great idea. Yeah. Tabletops, all kinds of things. So, yeah, anyway, I'm watching the show Mayor of East Town. It's got Kate Winslet in it. It's so funny. She's constantly um, inhaling on a jewel. And I'm wondering if it really is like the pods that they use because they're bad for you. And Uh, so I don't know if she's just really um, hooked on them or if they made her special like one with just water. I don't know. It's just kind of interesting. I always get sidetracked with stupid stuff like that. But it's a good show. I have two more shows left. And then um, that's it. So... So, yeah, it's nice to be back. It's, you know, I kind of I'm feeling good about the pandemic being over, feeling good that I'm not quite as lazy as I thought I was. (laughs) Getting my first colonoscopies coming up. You are? Yeah. When? I think like June 9th or something like that. I got to double check. Oh, my God. Yeah. They're like, you could do that or you could do the, you know, regular test that you do every year. And I'm like, oh. I haven't had any action for a long time. Let me go ahead and get that colonoscopy. <laughs> yeah. You have a driver? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. But no, I, I just figured if I have the opportunity to really make sure everything's good, I opted yeah. for that yes. option. So um, they gave me the other option by just doing the test, you know. But mm-hmm. I said, no, I'll do the I'll do the colonoscopy just to make sure everything's good. I can't wait to hear all about it. You're going to have such a story. Yeah. I'll fill everybody in on the on the experience. So it was good catching up. Well, I wanted to thank you for coming to my dad's service. Oh, yes. It yeah. was so nice having you there for support. Oh, it good. It really was. I hope it wasn't too boring for you. Or no, not at all. It was nice. Bird. Yeah, n- no, it was nice. It was nice meeting everybody, and um, I'm glad I was able to, you know, be there for you. And, no, it meant the world to me, and it was. It really did help me out. Oh, good. Having that support, it was really great. Good. It was a, a little bit of a hard day. We had the ceremony in Florida, and this was like the actual burial. And you were there. It was a very short service, like, I don't even know, maybe 15 minutes, 20 minute service. Mm -hmm. And then we went and had lunch, which was delicious. Yeah. Food just kept coming and coming and it was awesome. But yeah, it was a really nice low drama ceremony. It was definitely closure, I think, for everybody. You need those rituals. You really do. I I didn't realize because... When my dad died, I hung on to his ashes for a while. I didn't want to let them go. Mm-hmm. And I was really upset at my sister for scheduling the burial, which didn't take place. It was not the right date, but that's all. And um, it's like another story. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, when it did happen, it's closure. Well, I had his ashes. I had to drive them up from Florida. And we stopped in three hotels. On the way up, so out of the car, into the car, out of the car, into the car. I was so worried about these ashes. And then when we went to the actual burial, Mary's graduation was the weekend before. So we took her down to Mary's, and in between Mary's and the burial, we went to Skyline Drive. But I didn't want to take them to Skyline Drive Because some of those cabins, they don't lock very well. And I don't know. I just didn't feel comfortable. So I put them under Mary's bed. She has one of these elevated beds in her Mm -hmm. apartment with her sorority sisters. 
So one night she texts me and she's like, Zuko was chewing on Bob Sash's oh. box. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh god. Uh, so I was just so OCD about the ashes. Right. And I did have them here on my desk for a good long time. About, I don't know, let's see, April, May, maybe two months. So it was nice. It was really nice having him on my desk. But the transporting, I just felt so much pressure. Like if something happens to these ashes, it's yeah. going to be bad. And the freaking urn thing was heavy it was like some kind of a marble thing mm -hmm. I mean, it must have weighed like 35 pounds this mm. marble urn with the ashes so it was you know i put it in a canvas bag and just lugged that thing all over the place <laughs> it was kind of like um flat stanley oh Remember my flat god stanley when your yes. kids were little Ugh. flat stanley goes to the washington monument that's hilarious <laughs> oh my god pop pops ashes <laughs> and all the way up 95, <laughs> all the way back down 95. <laughs> Did it ever like hit you like for years? Well, you know, I'm not even going to say it. I'm not going to say it. What? No, because say if it. it hasn't like for years, you just hear people say, I want to be cremated. I want to be cremated, you know, and, and you just hear the, the term, you know, yeah. and then when you're, they're cremated, you're like, Oh my God, they're in here. You know, it's like, when you were a kid and you're like, yeah, I like chicken. I wanted to have chicken. You get it in the store. It seems like it's all manufactured. Then <laughs> the first time you see it roaming around on the yard, you're like, holy shit, that's a chicken. That's what I'm eating. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yeah. just like you don't like dive the revelation deeper. of it. Yeah. Yeah. You don't dive deeper than what you see at the grocery store as a kid. Yeah. And and it's just like same thing. Uh, cremated. Okay. Oh, once it's done, you're like, oh, I was like, hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It just, it really doesn't mean a thing to me. I don't know why it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's dad's ashes. I had to put a meaning to it. To me, it was just an object on my desk. It wasn't him. Yeah. You know it's hard I mean? to fathom. Yeah. And for me, I told my kids, look, take my body Take me on a boat, throw some blood over the water, throw my body in. I just oh want to be God. fish food. Fish food. <laughs> Jesus. I thought you were going to say, just throw my ashes on the water, you know? No, throw my whole body in the water and let me oh. be fish food. Draw the sharks in and throw me in. And Timmy's like, oh, my God, no, Mom, no. To me, you're dead. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It's yeah. just, it's over. It's game over. It's Again, it's just the ritual, the closure. It's mm -hmm. more for the people living than the dying person. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't put a whole lot on stock into it, but yeah. you got to do it. You got to do something. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's the cheapest option. So, yeah, it is very reasonable. I was very surprised. I'm not for laying people out and I mean, that's just me personally, but it does bring closure. But like with my dad, we, you know, we just had a memorial service. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I went to your dad's service. Mm -hmm. and, didn't I? Yes. Yeah. I thought so. Yeah. I and I, I like that, you know, where you don't have to look at them and stuff like that. Cause I don't know. It just, that's not how I want to remember people. Well, your dad's service was so beautiful. I love that church. It was just so quaint and so beautiful. Yeah, it was nice. Yeah. But yeah. anyway, thanks for being there. That was terrific. So we had my dad's service. I buried him. We had Mary's graduation. Timmy's in a rehab in California. So oh, okay. So both my kids will be in California. Oh, wow. Okay. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. We just got to get your son out there, and then I guess we have an excuse to move. No kidding, huh? Yeah, hopefully he'll be graduating soon. Probably sometime in the, I guess, after the first uh, semester. Wow. That and that's what, he, that's what he plans on doing, is moving out there. Does he really? Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, thank you for the very generous graduation gift. Oh, yeah. Did no she problem. send you a thank you card? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very nice. Okay, good. 
That was really nice. So make sure I get a graduation announcement. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I can pay you back. <laughs> Isn't that how it works? We I don't know that we'll even do anything. I mean, we'll see. That's exciting, though. Very exciting. Yeah, it's nice. You know, he didn't know what he wanted to do. And so I'm glad he's doing something and he's doing well at it. I'm proud of him. Well, Cheryl, this has been really terrific catching up with you. I've missed you so much. Uh, I've just been so busy with all of these construction and my dad and my son and my daughter and all this traveling we're doing. But hopefully things will be settling down now at least for the next few months, so we can get back on a regular schedule. Yeah, I miss you too. It seems like um, we will be on a regular schedule fairly soon, hopefully, with everything being lifted and our lives getting back to normal. And... All right, Cheryl. Well, I guess I'll talk to you next week then. Okay, nice catching up. Talk to you later, Carol. All right, bye-bye. Bye. Carol and Cheryl, thank you. Carolyn Cheryl, thank you.